Strange blobs beneath the earth could be remnants of an ancient magma ocean. This is by Stephanie Pappas, life science creator. This is parallel to what we had on Message to Eagle. Cutaway of Earth's surface shows a view of the interior down to the Earth's core. This is by the Arizona State University. Two giant mysterious blobs beneath the Earth's surface puzzle scientists. They discovered two massive mysterious blobs beneath the Earth's surface. Surfaces, two structures each the size of a continent and 100 times taller than Mount Everest lie deep within the Earth, roughly on opposite sides of the planet under the Pacific Ocean on one side and beneath Africa and the Atlantic Ocean on the other side. Our planet is layered like an onion with a thin outer crust, a thick viscous mantle, and a fluid outer core, and a solid inner core. The blobs are made of something different from the rest of the Earth's mantle, and the huge structures sit on the core, 1,800 miles deep, at about halfway to the center of the Earth, for now, it remains unclear what these structures are, but scientists suspect they hold important clues as to how Earth was formed and how it works today. According to Eduardo Garnero of the Arizona State University, these blobs may not only cast more light on the Earth's formation, but they can also help explain the plumbing that leads to some massive volcanic <coughs> eruptions, as well as the mechanism of plate tectonics from the convection or the stirring of the mantle. This is the geoforce that drives earthquakes. Waves from earthquake passing through Earth's deep interior have revealed that these blobs are regions where seismic waves travel slowly. The mantle materials that surround these regions are thought to be composed of cooler rocks associated with the downward movement of tectonic plates. Much is yet to be learned about these blobs, but the emerging view from seismic and geodynamic information is that they appear denser than the surrounding mantle materials, are dynamically stable and long-lived, and have been shaped by the mantle's large-scale flow. The scientists expect that further work to the two deep-seated anomalies will help clarify the picture and tell of their origin. Now, these strange blobs, a little bit after the Arizona State, uh, July 2018, 2016, sorry, article, we have the update on September 2018. These mysterious blobs, two years later, deep in the Earth's mantle, could be materials that precipitated out of an ancient magma ocean, they say that formed in the collision that also created the moon. These blobs, called ultra-low velocity zones, are found very deep in the mantle, close to the Earth's core. They're known only because when seismic waves from earthquakes travel through them, the waves slow dramatically. This indicates that these blobs are somehow different from other parts of the mantle, but no one knows why and how. Now, new research suggests that the blobs could be an iron oxide-rich mineral called magnesio wustite. If so, their existence would hint at a former magma ocean that might have existed four and a half billion years ago when a huge chunk of space rock rammed into Earth, spun off the material that would become the moon, and possibly melted large portions of the planet. Quote, if one can identify these patches due to contain an amount of magneso wustite, that would be an indication that there was a magma ocean and it crystallized in this fashion where the, where the iron-rich oxide precipit precipitated out and sank down to the base of the Earth's mantle. This is what the study leader Jennifer Jackson said. She's a professor of mineral physics at the California Institute of Technology. And the oddness, how odd these blobs are. The mantle, as we said, is around 1,800 miles thick, and the ultra-low velocity zones are less than a mile to up to 62 miles thick and wide, Jackson said. They 
slow down the seismic waves that travel through them from 30 to 50 percent. Studying these weird blobs directly is not possible, so Jackson and her colleagues had to mimic the pressures of the deep mantle right at Earth's surface and to find out if the mineral magniso wustite has the kind of properties as seen in ultra-low velocity zones. The researchers took to a small sample of the mineral, put it in a pressure chamber, and squeezed it hard with a pair of diamond anvils. The whole pressurized apparatus is small enough to fit in the palm of a hand. Sometimes they'll say that they'll carry it around the core mantle boundary pressure in their pockets. The researchers bombarded the sample with x-rays from different angles and then measured the energy of the x-rays that, that exited the sample, looking for how interactions with the crystalline structure of the mineral changed and what happens under pressure. They found that high pressure changes everything. At atmospheric pressure, Jackson said waves existing at magneso wustite sample are always the same, no matter what direction they travel through the crystal. At core mantle boundary pressures, though, the direction of the waves travel much uh, travels matters a lot. They can be up to 60% different in the speed of wave going through the crystal, depending on how it passes through. A transverse wave traveling through the mineral moves a little less than 1.8 miles per second in one direction and a little more than 3.1 miles per second in another direction. The fastest direction of travel for the waves at atmosphere pressure along the edge of the crystal structure is the slowest direction of travel for a wave at core mantle pressure. The fastest direction of the travel at core mantle pressure is across the face of the crystal in the lab. These differences in how waves travel, depending on the direction and the crystalline structure, are called anisotropies. And what does this mean for the real mantle? Well, Jackson said anisotropies have been observed down there too. No one has really looked to see if ultra-low velocity zones have them, but there's reason to think they might. If the cooling magma ocean theory is true, and there is a magneso wustite deep in the mantle, it could be pushed, squished, and nudged into an anisotropic, anisotropic configuration by pieces of ocean crust that have been pushed deep into the mantle in the process of subduction. Subduction is when one piece of crust pushes below another and dives into the mantle, as happens along the coast of Northwest North America today. That's the Juan de Fuca plate, for example, and the Cascadia fault line. If we can look at it, it would really be good evidence to suggest this interaction of ancient slab subduction and ultra-low velocity zones that contain this iron-rich oxide. Now Jackson hopes to work with seismologists to see if seismic waves that enter ultra-low velocity zones come, come out differently depending on the direction of the travel. And if they do, it will further bolster the magneso wustite hypothesis. Jackson said, the presence of this material being shaped by the slab could give us insight to Earth's magma ocean and its crystallization. This was published in May in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Solid Earth, and it's on live science. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help 
economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.